aisles tonight by that door, right? <laughs> so you feel a little bit like you're more here than you did when you walked up, right? You're here, you're, and everybody knows it. All right. All right. Hi, Marsha. Uh, good evening, everyone. Um, thank you so much for coming out tonight. It's March 18th. It is my birthday. So, so you are my party, and I'm seven plus 69, no, plus how old am I? 70, actually. Um, anyway, thank you for coming out tonight. This is a, a reading for the future. I'm so excited. When uh, Pog was planning, oh, my name is Cynthia Miller, by the way. Uh, when Pog was planning this reading on March 18th, I go, oh, you know, it's always my birthday. And I thought, who's reading? Hank Glazer's reading? Tenny's gonna come in here and read without, you know, without a mask? Charles is reading. Well, I don't want to miss that, you know. So, I'm very. I was very excited to be part of this. So, thank you. Um, we appreciate all your support. You know, your, your your money at the door, and if you have extra money laying around, we appreciate that too. Um, I hope you're all doing well. Um, I know that this is a, a kind of an untethered time in our on our planet, and. Uh, Untethered, I think, is a really nice word. It's a kind of a poetic word um, where we feel sort of like a string of a kite, you know, and we're kind of out on the end of it waiting to see what's going to bounce us which way or what way or, you know, up or down. And uh, that's okay, you know, a little ballast. I mean, we're okay. We're really okay. So anyway, um, so poetry for the future. All these guys have Buddhist leanings. All these guys, if I can say that, how about <laughs> fair to say, um, you know, whatever else they do, whether they teach or they, you know, play sports or they go to Speedo Canyon to write poems and sit in the sand. Um, you know, this is a, a really important time. If you have not taken up Buddhism yet, I suggest you do that tomorrow. <laughs> tomorrow, okay? First thing tomorrow. Um, you know, just wake up and say, tell, tell yourself, I'm here for you, right? And see what changes when you show up for yourself. It's uh, quite remarkable. Little, little steps. Buddhism, Buddhism always is about um, oddball things that don't seem of no significance, and then they are, okay? Kind of like me tonight. Okay, well, I just wanted to say thank you to uh, the Arizona Commission on the Arts, who is still there for us. Uh, Poets and Writers, Inc., which is a terrific organization, also publishes a magazine and helps writers get published and write and take classes. Um, Czechs Press, uh, to which I am forever indebted for many reasons, um, and for their, their consistent support over the years, the University of Arizona community. Um, um, the students, the faculty, the Poetry Center, mostly the English department, and uh, the Arizona Quarterly, okay. We'd love to thank all our individual donors, but I'm not gonna read all your names, okay. But thank you, thank you, and thank you, thank you for the 20 of them. If you're interested in being a supporter of the of POG, which stands for nothing, by the way, it's Poetry Group, there's no other thing, P-O-G, POG. Um, Meaning life with the reader. <laughs> there you go. Um, you, you can make a donation and you can become a supporter, a patron, you know, a guardian angel. Um, there's, there's pledge forms on our website. What else should I tell you? The next reading that's coming up, which is next week, is on March 25th, which is Rodrigo Toscano. And he's going to be reading with Barbea Williams, who does the African dance program here in town and has been doing it for 30, 40 years. And she's going to be giving a talk about dance and her life in dance. And that is going to be at the Proper Shops, which is kind of a new venue. It's a bunch of, I call them kids, um, are renting a space together. And there's everything from an eatery and a clothing shop and all kinds of things going on there. It's across from the Hotel Congress. That'll be at 7 PM. Okay. Let's see, what else can I tell you? Um, most of our past readings have been videotaped or audio taped, and you can go to our website and, and um, Pog Arts Tucson and take a look at, at past readings because we've had some doozies. So if you get more hungry for poetry, and if you can take time out from writing it yourself, go check it out. 
um, Pog tends to uh, intends to be and tends to be an inclusive, supportive, and most importantly, a safe space for everybody. So, if anyone should feel not safe here, um, you know, um, please let us know. And there's uh, people here on the Pog board. If you would just identify yourselves in some way, okay, and you can talk to us, or for any other reason you want to talk to us. Um, um, I'd like to do the, the land of acknowledgement, and I know this is always kind of a tricky thing. I don't want it to be a road thing, you know, just sort of you do the thing. Um, but to understand that, that we share responsibility for this part of the planet with people who have been here for a very long time, um, and the native peoples here are the Tohono O'odham, and now the Yaquis, who have been recognized um, as um, part of the America and Indians since the 1970s and are building that casino down in the old century um, theater thing on Grant. So we can all go spend our quarters, um, a little reparations there. Anyway, that, we, that we're really all, you know, kind of conservators of this space. And, uh, you know, whether it's the plants, the animals, the, the terrain, you know, that we're all here to take care of it, or to be stewards of this, this planet and this land. So however you can address that, um, we want to move forward in the spirit of reconciliation, collaboration, and fun. OK, thank you very much for coming. Um, Charles will introduce the first reader. Actually, no. Actually, no. <laughs> Teddy will introduce the first reader. So uh, we decided we were going to do uh, tiny impressionistic uh, introductions. So uh, we also decided that since Charles is going to introduce both Hank and me, that we would both introduce Charles. So we're each doing half of a tiny impressionistic introduction. And I thought I'd better write it out or it wouldn't be tiny enough. So it's really quick. So it says, well, materiality feels like such an abstract word. So thinginess, stuffness, blob, and pinprick, rollers, pulp conchining slowly to paper, ink blots and splotches, forays into feral sound rolled into phonemes, rolled into words in the mouth on the page is muthos. And to ask what's the point is, well, to miss the point. Please get to the point. I have learned to wait, Suzuki said. For what is also a kind of gaff. But love for sure lurks somewhere around here, wanders the neighborhood, often pretty close by. I think Berrigan said, Everything that's going to happen is already happening. Yes. Let me begin with a little bit of reading from Charles's Pushing Water, The Scaffolds. Without trembling, we forgive and open into the unkempt and unsealed imaginings where pours all into some new rock whose fault lines portray the terrors of it all, the generative errors of language confront us and turn us and point and lead to permutations that include one and two and other and halves and all transgressions and multiple colors here in the spaces and in the time that we have the water that we taste together. We are and are among points and punctuations surrounded by waters and words. And I'm eternally grateful to Charles for the water and the words that he has made possible for each and all of us. I just feel Charles provides a love and energy and knowledge that is so crucial to our feeling of community and communal purpose together in this strange activity of making books, of writing poetry, uh, doing something that's more and more crucial in this complex and challenged time. So it's with um, great love and appreciation that I introduce to you, Charles Alexander. I love these guys. <laughs> no, I think I, I think I have a reason to, and. Okay, I won't say too much more. We agree that we would have these little micro introductions, so I want to stick to that. But I do, you know, these really are two poets that are amazing poets whose work I love, whose being I love, and who I am amazingly happy to be with here tonight. And 
first one is going to be me. <laughs> I was going to start on my introduction. See, I'm really out of it. No. Okay, I'm going to turn on my stopwatch. Yeah, yeah, I bet you were. I'm going to turn on my stopwatch, and and um, but I don't count times if the train blows its horn. That it doesn't count. That that thing is stuck now. I think okay. it's not training. It's no, it's just stopped. But there may be a train. We don't know. Or there may not be. A train. <laughs> I wrote a work during COVID um, called Book Mark, and it really kind of uses parts of book to try and see out a lens. Um, and, and one part is about metal, the metal of type and machines that print. One part is um, about particularly uh, water and water's role in paper, in making paper. And another is ink. And the final one is book as, as a whole. And the only one I've never read in public is the one by ink, and that's the one I'm going to read now. Uh, so if you think, if, if you think I am re haven't read this before because it's the, the worst of them all, well, you're, you're wrong. <laughs> so ink, black, mark, I, N, K, I, not, no, or I, not, not, tied up. But the ink can be naughty, tasting notes, a little thick in blue, blue and green, the sludge one feels a plus in peat. Cleans true with Crisco. Ink on a roller, not roll on a log. You won't get this out of your white cotton shirt. A printer's dream is an inky queen. The ink's the matter, and a solid matter. Push it left, push it right. Work it, work it, work it. Who knew poetry, for poetry printed is ink settled, could be so physical? Let the rollers run so the ink spreads, a music of whirr, and go, lump and roll. Do not forsake me, oh my darling. Inky boo, inky bee, inky run around. I don't know about that. <laughs> I N K is not known if never keened ill new country. Language is a box. Ink comes in a tin, round and sealed, rubber or oil. If you spill white rubber based ink on wood, it may be there forever, but never settled like paint. Ink lives, stretch, 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 live ink drips. What's the price of this inkle silk twin with the rubied cherry, her inkle, periwinkle? And with mine eyes, I'll drink the words you send, though ink be made of gall. That's from Shakespeare's simile. There's a bit of ink to blood in Shakespeare, though I've never bled ink. I may have printed blood. I have certainly bled on pages, and a wild deer bled on many of my pages one November morning, but did not fall into a pit of ink. That would be a nasty way to go. Bring me spices, ink, and paper, and I will meld into words. In a fortnight, slide into sentences, Prance into phrases, pause between paragraphs, vary among vowels, crawl within consonants, shine on, shine on, you glossy ink stain. Ink, soot-like, emerges in China's Warring States period. Ink from graphite, ground with water, applied with brushes, is evident, though the substance may go back three or four millennia, mil inkia. Plant, animal, and mineral materials have contributed to ancient inks. 
The best inks for drawing or painting on silk or paper are produced from the resin of the pine tree between 50 and 100 years old. Chinese ink stick, fish glue, Japanese ink stick, cow or stag glue, India ink first in China, its production well established by the Cao Wei dynasty. Ingredients in ink, atramentum, gall nuts, iron salts, hawthorn branches, wine, lamp black, egg white, water. Ink colors, ink discolors. Where isinglass is a binder, ink may be harder and more impervious to the ravages of time. Ink knife is not a knife made of ink. Ink readable or ink readable, legible ink in K, kiss, in K, clined. We have been to the site, have breathed the multicolored air. Now come again, low down where the large drums sound you, sound the vibrations of the spheres. Bodkin, bod ink, a stylus by any other name. My head is flat and smooth, but sharp my foot, and by man's hand to different uses put, for what my foot performs with art and care, my head makes void, such opposites they are. With what instrument do you apply your ink? Ink, 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 Next two pages are ink splotches on paper, which I made today um, after having in this manuscript had just stock colors of ink splots before. So here's an ink splot. <laughs> And this one a little more readable, a little more literal. Ink rocks. Ink trees. Ink river. Ink sand. I ink thee. I ink thee not. Wait, I wrote this. I ink this. Is ink belief? But inky is the name of my cat. Ink, link, blink, sink, pink, fink, wink, mink, big, dink, plink, plunk, plank, re ink when the image fades. Ink is not like a clock or a wheel. Ink is more like a hiccup or a slip. Ink is not like an electric burner. Ink is more like a gas burner. Ink is not like a business meeting. Ink is more like a vacation. Ink splatters like ink splatters. Ink blotches like oil in water. Ink is not like a father. Ink is more like a sister. Ink is not like a pre-recorded set of instructions for telephone options. Ink is more like the crescendoing voice of Etta James. Ink is not like a border wall. Ink is more like a border blur. Ink is not like a migrant. Ink is a migrant. Ink is not like a water tank. Ink is more like a lake. Ink is not like metal or paper or a poem. Ink is more like ink. Put ink on with an ink knife. 
taking off with a solvent like mineral spirits or California wash. Put ink on with rollers, take ink off with Crisco. Wear rubber gloves when taking ink off and use cotton rags. This is a love story in a broken world made of wood, metal, paper, rag, oil, solvent, and ink. This is an inky love story, the spread of substances on surfaces. Ink is not ink which does not alter when alteration finds. Ink may be found upon an altar. I have known ink. I have lost and found ink. I am stained by ink. Stained. This is a love story. Ink, a noun. Ink, a verb. Inked, a verb, past tense. Inked, an adjective. Ink, pronounced something like knee, but backwards and with a hard K. Ink, yes, I wink, yes, I ink. Ink is not like a knee, but like the soft flesh of belly or ass. Ink does not sink. If one immerses ink, one might not emerge. Does this mean one might become ink? As two become one, might two become ink, or three mustard my heart, three personed ink, opaque, white, or Dutch fireball red. The absence of ink, not the absence of print. For a whole book may be inkless, but being inkless, is it read or touched and entered by the senses as a cave with no light, dependent on proprioception? Where are you, ink? Where am I, ink? Be beside me in the night. Be luminous in the dark. Be awake in the morning. Be my shape's impression in the evening. I told you this is a love story. Dersu! Capitan! Ink is not ink, period, incorporated. Though an ink period, may manufacture and distribute an ink or many inks. Van Sun Ink may be Van Sun Incorporated. Daniel Smith Incorporated sold their name brand ink, but they are no more, as with a favorite Sinclair and Valentine, S Ink Lair and Valent Ink. No matter. No ink matters. But ink is matter. Black holes represented by black masses. Ink when shot and ooze, when pressed thin, a lack of breath. Ink breathes, inkless. I wonder how we might find the common word. Light <clears throat> is digital ink. Ink, fade to black. Okay, that's ink. I'm going to close with a poem that um, Cynthia Miller asked me to read since it's her birthday. And this is uh, a poem that was used as a kind of a one of the few things as a preface to the wonderful Tucson painter Nancy Tokar Miller's um, exhibition, retrospective exhibition in retrospect. And it is from an earlier work of mine, uh, the first volume of uh, pushing water that Hank referred to. And it has a little bit of Welsh in the first line, which has to do with um, the things hidden by uh, Arthur that will be found in the future. Aneth bid bet e Arthur, anoint with bells and art soars, anew by earth and water. Dig under the words, or inside them. Word earth, wonder, aneth. Behind our house, a mound of dirt rich for the garden. Leave it undisturbed until music fills the weeds, the grass, the red buds and petals, and purple yellow, the difficult things of wonder, the uncovered dreams, anethow. Materials in which I speak of the best of dreams dreamed at midnight when men, women, and their voices rest. Thank you. Norman Fisher begins his comment on Tanny Nathan's little work saying, Oh boy, oh boy!
And he mentions in that comment uh, both Whitman and Manic comic books. Other statements about Nathanson's work mention Whitman again, Orpheus, Jack Spicer, Dick Cheney, <coughs> the Kool-Aid Kid, no, the Kool-Aid Man, I like the Kool-Aid Kid, but the Kool-Aid Man, and um, And Terminator 2, of course. What is this? I mean, uh, Teddy Nathanson maybe holds up a big vacuum cleaner and sees what comes in. Of course, what comes in? Everything. This work is inclusivity. This work is work that brings in the world that we all know, and then the particularly what this one mind knows and confronts, filters it through Buddhism, through films such as The Last Wave, and leaves it for us to be in. To read a Tanny Nathanson poem is not to be alienated from what you're reading, it is to be in the midst of what you are reading, because it is what is our midst. Please welcome Danny Nathanson. Thank you, Charles. That's very, very beautiful. Yes, thank you so much. So I'm really honored to be reading with uh, Charles and, and Hank. Two, two of my favorite poets, for, for sure. Uh, I think I'm probably going to read just a, a chunk of uh, the book that's going to come out pretty soon from, from Jack's uh, Ghost Snow 2. It's a follow-up to the, to the most recent Jack's volume that I did. And uh, I'll probably read one part of one section from toward the end of the manuscript. The, the section's too long to, to read all of, uh, but let me get my watch going here. But I'll, I'll pick up in the middle and probably read, read uh, to the end of it. So uh, the beginning of it is pretty mordant. And the part I'm going to read is not quite like that and plays off it. So I'm not sure how it's going to feel without the mordant part. I hope it doesn't feel too sentimental, but we'll see. It's written mostly in early 1922, the run-up to the midterm election, which was a time of great dread that we're probably not quite out of. But it was you can see more dreadful back then. Uh, there's a bunch of stuff that comes uh, in the earlier part of the section from the London Economist where they do a democracy index. And there's a list of full democracies, flawed democracies, hybrid regimes, and authoritarian regimes. And uh, the US is a, a flawed democracy. And the earlier part of the section lists some of our bedfellows. And they're, it's a remarkable list, the countries that we're, we're grouped with. So there's that. There also, as Hank was saying uh, yesterday in his talk, a whole lot of references in here, a lot of quotations. So you'll find Whitman and Dickinson, some Keats, and some Emerson, and some Stevens. There's also a bunch of uh, Zen Cohen's smattered throughout here, mostly from the Blue Cliff record. And just a couple uh, quick explanations. The, the kayas, like the three kayas, the three bodies, is a kind of Buddhist heuristic just for three ways of characterizing three aspects of how things are, how we experience them. Uh, Daiosho means great teacher. Emptiness is D.T. Suzuki's bad translation of shunyata, which is maybe like the vastness or the plenum or the eternal aspect of things. And then a kalpa is like a giant unit of time. So the universe comes into being, and then it goes out of being. And that's one kalpa, and then there's an em empty kalpa, and then it starts again. So to pick up kind of right out of the list of a lot of the flawed democracies. So strange bedfellows, well, geez, we've already been in bed with most of them. Kenosha Daiosho, canoe, canoe, Zhaosho said no. It's well known that another time he responded in the interrogative, can you speak? I said then, seated facing him on our cushions and mats, Zahu and Zabutan to you, lovable, huggable Emily Brown. He said, Miss Brown to you, I said, where the trees sway in wind, palo verdes and mesquites, but now the huge cottonwood stream in cold wind. He sees an arctic effulgence flaring on the frame of everything he is, and he feels afraid. Take it easy, Zhao said. No, you take it easy. He opens the door of his house on flames. Excuse me, what happened to the transcendentalism? This is it, said Zhao Zhou. 
Another time he just said yes. Every roof is agreeable to the eye until it is lifted. Then we find tragedy and moaning women and hard-eyed husband, very few ideas and very few original tales. Phew, we made it to the roof at last, 16th floor, and just in the nick of time too, so how's the view? Finland is a full democracy. Time for a word from natural piety. O oh, thou rust brown water tower, tried and true friend, not looking too much the worse for wear after doing a stint now in three straight books. If this be unwinding and upon me proved, here's the city or no man ever loved. Open the door and see all the people. There's the twin towers pancaking down. There's windows on the world and then I could not see to see. And there's that little threshing floor that makes men wax so fierce, unquote. My name is No Man. Time for a word from our sponsor. Will it be destroyed? It will be destroyed. Hiatus. Will it go along with it? More hiatus. It will go along with it. Even more hiatus. Then the faintest signal. Can you make it out? Waltz four dots? Nope, Emily's dashes. A signal of distress if ever there was one. What is this no if ever there was one? I understood the refutation, but not the proof. Look on the bright side. OK. Well, yeah, it would be a little rougher without trusty beloved Beatrice here at my side. Beatrice to you at the, at the cosmic drive-in. Swell to have your teenage girlfriend banked in eternity like a private government bond, happy to take some time off from whatever she was up to up there among the celestial spheres and show you around the place, maybe stop for a little espresso romano, since this time we're doing it in Italian. It's like keeping a little emptiness in your back pocket in case you suddenly need some. Prayer is the little implement through which men reach where presence is denied them, said Emily. They fling their speech by means of it in God's ear. If then he hear, this sums the apparatus comprised in prayer. And if not, not, right? Where do we find ourselves? It will be destroyed. Poof, no world, no solar system, universe, no multiverse, dunno. Prepare to jibe, jibe, ho, clonk. And I hit my head again on the lintel of the tiny doorframe at Cerro Gordo Temple, as if Zazen were a party game for kids. The old poet is a tramp. It was beautiful there in November. Will it be destroyed? The leaves, they were withered and sere. Will it go along with it? Ralph called him the jingle man. Zhao Zhao said, no, what is this no? Yasutani said, as to destruction, everything will be destroyed. Canada is a full democracy. People grieve and bemoan themselves. As to no, nothing will be destroyed. What is the eye of this Cohen? The student didn't accept Dashway's response, so he left and went to the teacher, Tozi, to whom he recounted the conversation. Tozi turned to his altar, bowed to the Buddha, turned to the student and said, you should go back there as fast as you can and make amends for your mistake. The student hurried back to Dashway, but Dashway was already dead. He returned to Tozi, but Tozi too had died. Don't worry, we'll come back to it later. Right now we're busily finding unwinding. Was it Boscovich who found out that bodies never come in contact? Austria is a full democracy. Well, souls never touch their objects. Spain is a full democracy. An innavigable sea washes with silent waves between us and the things we aim at and converse with. Schweto said, caught between destroyed and not destroyed, the student asks his question in the light of the culp of fire. Touchingly, it's because of a single phrase, it will be destroyed, that he travels back and forth for 10,000 miles alone. Don't worry, we'll come back to it later. Guatemala is a hybrid, hybrid regime. Greek too, grief, too, will make us idealists. So it is with this calamity. It does not touch me. Something which I fancied was a part of me, which could not be torn away without tearing me, nor enlarged without enriching me, falls off from me and leaves no scar. Nicaragua is authoritarian. Japan is a full democracy. Help! Inside this stretchy interregnum of what incipient catastrophe or not, a wash and sloshing, calling all, nat calling all natural piety. Jiaozhou said, no, I said, here come the cavalry in the present subjunctive or optative mood. I said, Waldo, run quick, carry back Walt on your back, tell him, bring some Grigri quick, not dead. Okay, he said, hiatus. I celebrate myself. Then Walt lay back and loafed in the grass, leaned and loafed at his, e leaned and loafed at his ease and said, where the pack rats kick up pebbles and the rabbits scurry through the scrabbly underbrush, where Z saw the tiniest baby rabbit on the dark road, no bigger than a frog, where the sun comes up cold over the heaved mountain ridge, breathing slowly through a million years. Time spins the silence, threading time, I said once. 
where the fog slides slowly down the mountain, nestling, washing down and mingling among the foothills, and wallows and wanders the tree-strewn wash as mist, where the house dogs howl, mistaking the Amazon delivery person on the porch for Z back home at long, long last from work, and later, Ozzy lifts his tiny chipu muzzle to 80 degrees, throws back his head and howls. He hears the coyotes howl. OK, the cry of the West, yeah, but it chills the blood. Poor rabbit, poor rabbit. And Ozzy's heard the owl at midnight, too, hoo-hooing in thick night mist, an omen, no man, dying. He's dying. Don't worry, we'll come back to it later. Where Charles said third basin, to, where, where this is Charles Bernstein, by the way. Where Charles said third base person, that was in 1980. Literature is news that stays news. The bird said, David, you're wrong. Where the spell check can't spell chipu, the poet can't either Q-E-D, but what will tell you anon, aha, that is what was to be demonstrated. Don't worry, we'll come back to it later. Back to the things themselves, back to the storehouse consciousness. Where the moon floats low over the jagged mountains like a weightless disk buoyed up by liquid, slightly denser air, or, is if, it's, or if, it's, if it's foggy like an oblong blob in a gouache sky, now we're visiting the country called Heart's Tone. Under clouds, the sounds travel farther up the foothills. If you can hear the hum of car tires from Tanka Verde down by the wash. How is it far if you think it? The Rieta River. It's a wash, except when it's a wash, then it's a river. It's a dry humor. Wittgenstein said this cannot be said. Mist floating ghost-like through scrub trees, hills, the mountains, and a gash of moon, but makes itself manifest. The world is my world. Or the world is all that is the case, he also said. Then David Anton said he didn't like it. Later he liked it, he said. He realized it included every thought and feelings too, plus all our multifarious propositions about them. We're talking at the boundaries in a country where stand roughly there is no approximation, he said, but exactly what we mean. Ludwig, not David. In my dream, the nouveau academic pointillism needed a little sponging. This is that dream, be soft. I have made you a gouache. Bewitched, bothered, and be Mildred. Oops, spell track flubs nouveau again, wandering the trail of errors. Like the poem, it can't step into the same river without stubbing its toe. I said, Tenny, be soft. We're visiting the country called No Need to Make It New. It already is because it's old. It's very old. Ergo, be soft. Here where there is no time, moment by moment. Who said that? I did, said the little red hen. And mossy scabs of the worm fence and elder and mullen and pokeweed. Who's hearing? Tag team. I think I was speaking. Now your turn, said, uh, your turn now, Walt. Okay where the alligator sleeps in his tough pimples by the bayou and the geese sniff their food with short jerks, where the rattlesnake suns his flabby length on a rock. Oh, wow. Then Walt passed it over to Keats, or if a sparrow come before my window, I take part in its existence and pick about the gravel. Chameleon poet. The bird said, David, you're wrong. Oh, bird, be soft. David, what do you say? I say, stay, 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 streak intrinsicality only don't know. His gaze describes the tracks of flying birds. The grasses grow thick. And the plastic Venetian blind tassel floated up a little in the soft breeze coming in through the open window, not quite depending from its string, but just slightly borne aloft. I'm just like that, I thought. I was walking, bathed, and wafted by air. Now we're visiting the country some folks call Sambogakaya. It's curtains, a man, named, a man called Liberty Balance. I was sloshed in the rinse -omatic. The air was breathing. We were floating where air is water, or like water, too silver for a seam. Because the sun is lying low over the great peconic, the water is glinting. The water is a sea of slowly rocking light made by Emily Dickinson. It started so simply with a little bird. Then this happened, then that happened, then everything opened. Then butterflies off banks of noon leap plashless as they swim. The incantatory function of the imagery, that is the invitation to make ourselves over in the image of the imagery. This cannot be said, makes itself manifest where the air floats in drops of light like pins too fine for the eye to see. The world is my world. I guess it has said it twice now. That's okay, Walt said. Yet and still, you can't get the goose out of the bottle in the, in the country some folks call Nirmanakaya, and don't you forget it. 
In the country called Dharmakaya, there's no goose, no bottle, and no one speaking. No one hearing this cannot be said, but makes itself manifest. Mazu said, can you speak quick? I have a nosa mouth, and I said, Hakwan, honk, I said, stand roughly there. Now everybody stand up and flap your wings. You can move your hips now, said little Eva. Baby, do the locomotion with me. In the Nirmanakaya, the goose just dies. The dregs in the cup, once the drams poured off, are bitter. But what is poured off is sweet. Sweet enough, he said. This cannot be said, but makes itself manifest. I resume the overstayed fraction. In America, democracy just dies. Can you speak? The cat hissed in the chasm of delay. The soldiers torched the people's ragged huts. They called the ones they murdered pimps and sluts. Don't kill the cat. And Nanshuan put his sword down. In my dream, we were visiting a country called my dream. Zha Zha walked up and down with his sandals on his head. We're alive and we're dead. Good morning. What should I do when you die? Build me a seamless tomb, he said. What should the tomb's design be? Hiatus. Do you understand? Don't worry, we'll come back to it later. This is that later. Hands and eyes all through the body, gone to lunch and covered up our names. Emerson said, ghost-like, we glide through nature and should not know our place again. All things swim and glitter, he said. Azerbaijan is authoritarian. Turkey is a hybrid regime. Bulgaria is a flawed democracy. Spain is a full democracy. The United States is a flawed democracy. Amy Coney Barrett is a blowfish. It takes a tough man to make a tender chicken. And the high court is a beached whale. Was it always this fragile? Was it always partly torn? Zhao Zhou said, no. What is this, no? Was it ripped? Was it taped, tarped, torpedoed, or trapped, triangulated, tapped like tapioca? Was it a tangram? Was it shouting treason in a crowded theater? What is this tangram? It is well known that another time he answered, yes, of course. If this be error and upon me proved, where do we find ourselves? These javelinas are not maligned, though they gnash, charge, and chomp on your leg and kill your dog when you glance at their babies. Sounds reasonable. I never writ. It is reasonable. And no man ever loved. Wind will look like boreal night as it approaches them. No boreal night will look like frost as it approaches them. The stars are putting on their glittering belts. Not yet. Don't worry, we'll come back to it later. Now the moon comes over the hills like a drifting boat and slowly slips downstream and glides. A bark, a breeze, a bard, a barb, a barber, a barbarian, a bork who wins after all, a total loser. They broke it. No, we broke it. No, they broke it for real. We're a nation of blowfish marooned on a moonlit beach, our dying breath, an eerie but enchanted sound, a keening, wanly sobbing. The stars are not dying yet, but everything's looking a little more wabi-sabi whenever you look. That's another way of saying there's no time. Thank you. I feel like we're just starting the second part of a conversation that's been going on since Hank Lazar got into town a couple of days ago. And, and, uh, and maybe that conversation won't end um, at all. Uh, Hank Lazar has poems that look like poems. He also has poems that look like languages dancing across the page in strange shapes in loops, sometimes seeming anthropomorphic, sometimes seeming totally their own. Hank Lazar also has poems that look like prose. He has poems in color, he has poems not in color. I think what I'm suggesting, you know, I said about Tenny Nathanson and inclusivity, Hank Lazar is equally inclusive, although quite differently inclusive too. I want to say that Hank Lazar loves the world and loves the language that loves the world. And I don't mean that in any kind of rosy glasses, you know, blinders on. I mean, because love isn't like that, you know, as you all know. Love has all kinds of emotions and reactions within it. And you find those in Lazarus' poem. Uh, Tenny, one of the things I heard in, in the poem 
was, um, and I'm going to misquote this, I apologize, but uh, how can it be so far if, if you can think it? Hank Lazar thinks it. He writes it. He sounds it. And we get to hear those sounds. Please welcome Hank Lazar. Thank you, Charles. It's uh, main thing I picked up from what you said is I, I don't know what I'm doing, and so, <laughs> and so I'll try to illustrate that in a few, in a few. If it's true, and I'll try to illustrate that in, in a few different ways. Um, thanks to Pog. Thanks to Cynthia Miller. Thanks to Charles. Uh, Thanks to John Malillo for hosting a talk and wonderful conversation at University of Arizona. Thanks to poets and writers. I'll be reading from um, four most recent books. I write too much, and that worried me and embarrassed me. A friend of mine said, don't turn the spigot off. So I listened to that, and so I continue um, to write. I also um, didn't really publish a first big book of poetry till I was 42. So these things have their odd kind of uh, pacing to them. Also, there are various books available here. Uh, we're tinkering with an experiment. There's some books we'd like to give away and ask that uh, you take them for free and perhaps make a donation to Chax Press. Uh, at any rate, let me go ahead and begin reading around in, in various books. Uh, first, I'll read you from field recordings of mind and morning. And uh, let me just jump in and see what's possible. Again, the title of the book, Field Recordings of Mind and Morning, begins, it pays homage to Alan Lomax, who was in the Deep South recording blues and folk music. Uh, and I, my obsession for a long time has been to in some way attempt to understand the peculiar grace of consciousness, a key part of our being incarnate, the miracle of, of our being alive. And so field recordings of mind and morning are attempts at, at uh, very brief transcriptions of language entering in in the morning. Uh, the, the cover about seven years ago, who'd have thought this, I mean, I grew up in San Jose, California, a uh, Jewish Buddhist who came to Alabama in 1977 thinking I would stay for a year or two. What's happening in a lot of these poems, are they really are rooted in my experience at, at Duncan Farm, a farm that my wife and I inherited from her uncle Cooter in uh, about seven years ago. And so you'll, that's crucial to some of what's happening here. Field recordings of mind in mourning. Who can say what remains? This is the song of what you say. I live in the present moment of my reading. I live in the present moment of my writing. And each becomes a way. Then a bit of fa a brief family history. Don't lose what is happening to you this morning. They were wanderers out of necessity. My father's parents left Russia, or is it now Lithuania, crossed Siberia by train. Ten days, I was told, met up with relatives in Harbin, then moved to Yokohama, and eventually moved to the small farming town of San Jose, California, where my father was born in 1926. We always lived nearby within walking distance and saw them every week, Fania and Chaim. Each had a calmness and steadiness that they seemed unaware of. Some true ancestors we get to know in the slow practice of beings unfolding. So it's true. For, for the longest time, my writing incorporates my reading. And not in a cherry picking exactly way. I'm just interested in, I take on different, fairly long reading projects. And as I'm going along, we'll pull out sentences, not so much to illuminate, but to be side by side with the writing. So in this particular book, I, I was in the process, took a couple of years of reading uh, 
Dogen Shobogenzo. And so chances are, if you hear something really startling, it's Dogen, not me. And this one begins with a quotation from Dogen. However, now a mountain goat hangs by its horns in emptiness, as unto calm, as unto death, as that which you have been called to know, near full moon a walk at midnight with the youngest dog a walk upon the hillside, a walk among shadowy shapes, a walk in time among glistening figures. So something I'd suggest that you do, when I, when I wrote this initially, the field recordings of Mind and Morning, I, while I do collaborate with musicians in different ways, I didn't know what music might be able to do something with the writing here. And I, I listened, I went to, a, I don't go out much in the evening, I went to a brewery and listening to an electronic musician friend who happened that evening to be playing traditional Appalachian music on the banjo. I thought, that's it. That's it. And so Holland and I spent uh, a good period of time interrupted by the pandemic, but learning to see what's possible in an improvisatory way. So if you go to my website, go to hanklazer.com, there are 15 tracks that you can find there, almost all of them done on one take, because we had very limited time to be able to, to get together, play, and also it'll give you a, a range of pictures of Duncan Farm. And this is one that we worked out that way. So, and again, if you're in, if you happen to be in New Orleans, the middle of the month, we'll be performing on the Cafe Istanbul stage there, uh, April fifteenth or sixteenth. So the trees speak to one another underground and through the air, and I sit at daylight after walking the dogs up and back down the hillside. Light streams in through eastern facing curtains, and I arise. Mountains walk, and the Sanskrit word adimukti reaches me last night in the warm darkness, sitting beneath the dome of stars. At the very moment of sitting, what is sitting? Is it an acrobat's graceful somersault or the rapid darting of a fish? This next one is dedicated to poet and friend Joseph Lees. And I would just uh, alert you, Chax Press will be publishing Joseph's next book. And I've been watching it go through various transformations. It's a, a gorgeous, gorgeous, wonderful book. So stay tuned for that one. The hidden gem is the light of morning, the hay baler's row of yellow disks beside the giant cedar tree wild hibiscus thriving beside the illuminated farmhouse, gem hidden in the dreams of the sleeping woman, a place for Shekinah to hide, gem hidden with three brown dogs at rest after running the dew-covered hillside at dawn, hidden in the intricate nerves, ligaments, and muscles of this illuminated hand as its writing opens up into the light. <coughs> Eventually, I'll get to the shape writing that Charles was talking about uh, in a little while. Uh, what I tend to, I work in invented forms for a period of time, see what, what's possible in that particular form. After I thought the shape writing was going to be what would stay with me really for the rest of my writing life, and that didn't prove to be so. And uh, much to my embarrassment, I found myself writing in quatrains, and I found that really embarrassing and disturbing. Uh, three quatrains becoming about a 12 line poem, and I wrote hundreds of these, not realizing really it was just practice for when I needed to have that facility. So this particular book, When the Time Comes, is uh, a book about being present with my mother in the last couple weeks of her life. She was 90 years old and lived in Honolulu. Uh, I would encourage you to read the book, especially if you have people who are toward the end of their lives or involved in hospice care or anything like that. But um, I, I'm still not able to really read much from this book, except a little bit at the beginning and the end. The beginning, there's a prefatory poem here, which maybe will become a broadside. We'll see. We'll see what it, 
what happens. But we're, we're here tonight implicitly celebrating something odd and beautiful that we do, which is a love of poetry and a love of the book. And so this prefatory poem in this book is, is simply an acknowledgement of that. Written, written in the other form that I took on is William's triadic foot. So as, as I was working with, I was asking myself, who's written beautifully in old age? And, and Williams came to mind and uh, Robert Creeley and um, Wallace Stevens, so that occasionally I would have an interesting word in what I was writing. So that was helpful to read him. How lovely is the book, product of quiet mornings, product of yes, no, and maybe. How lovely is the book, extending hours of grief, providing clothing for memory. How lovely is the book, immersed in sorrow and injustice, refusing all false hope. How lovely is the book, product of many hands, community of gathered words. How lovely is the book, attending to the sound of each syllable with its secret music. How lovely is the book, seeing clearly, having given up all ideas. How lovely is the book, uncertain of itself, until you take it up. How lovely is the book, which you have chosen and which has chosen you. So that when the time comes section is all in the, the embarrassing quatrains, and then the latter part of the book, and then uh, is written in that triadic foot form. And I'll just read you one sample from that short poem. I sense there is an order other than chronology linking one thing to another. For instance, an event and a memory. Or the sudden demand to be more specific, say, strips of chicken breast, black beans, and rice the old dog and the young one lying down together on one small gray bed, or where the Mars helicopter ingenuity flies over a rocky plain named for Octavia Butler, or untended at wood's edge a small magnolia is beginning to bloom. Who among us has figured out what is our common need? If it's food, shelter, and compassion, tell it to the cows, pigs, and chickens. Thou shalt and thou shalt not but living happens more quickly than thinking and intention. So someone gave us a gift, four minutes and 33 seconds of silence, to sit and listen to this duration, to be attentive to the particulars of being. Is this not, in fact, our sacred common need? Turn away from it as we do. So the shape writing that Charles has alluded to, you can start to flip through and just see the radically different shapes. The, the prior book, the prior form I've been working in was an invented 54-word form, three words per line, uh, three lines per stanza, six stanzas, working with the mystical Jewish number 18. So every poem was 54 words. Uh, Bill Lavender published that. It's the book called Portions. Uh, and... I wrote exclusively in that mode for six and a half years. So again, you might ask yourself if the task you set for yourself is uh, invent a form and don't do anything else for six and a half years. Uh, <laughs> give it a try. I would urge you to give it a <laughs> See what you think. Uh, but at the end of six and a half years, I was absolutely sick of fixed form. And so what I determined is that the next way I would write would be uh, that every page would vary from the prior page in terms of its layout on the page. And initially I thought that, that meant for me stanzaic variation. And eventually I realized there wasn't a real way to, why was I obeying an X, Y grid for the writing of words? And then all hell broke loose. And so I spent 13, about 13 years writing exclusively in shape writing. And there have been several books of that published. And, um, I became very fond. It seemed to me a way to interfere with the automatic nature of reading. And it was a, this is a very common technique, the technique of defamiliarization, which again is, I think, germane to meditation. We're, we're all breathing and we pay no attention to it. So we, in meditation, we defamiliarize the act of breathing and realize it for the miraculous, beautiful thing that it is. Uh, in this case, so the shape writing, you know, you look at, you know how to read. Well, where does it begin? How, how do we perform it? What is this? What can be done with these? Uh, in one sense, 
They also become musical scores. So it's, if you look at, say, John Cage's musical scores or Anthony Braxton's scores, these things can be performed in many different ways, different voices, uh, different ways musically. They can be seen as choreography. One could move in, in doing something with them. So they're just a beginning. This particular book, Slowly Becoming Awake, that Robert Murphy, Robert and Elizabeth Murphy at Dos Madres published, uh, Robert asked me when, I see, when he said he would do the book and he would do six colors, which I thought this could be great. Uh, he said, would you, would you do transcriptions for them? And immediately I thought, hell no. That is uh, the whole thing. What I'm setting up through shape writing is a way to alter the reading process. But I was about to go to the Berkeley Zen Center to learn how to sew. So I didn't know how to thread a needle and I needed to sew a rakasu as part of my Zen training at the moment. And I didn't send the email back to him. And after two or three days of sewing, very slowly, I thought, that might, really be, that might be interesting to do transcriptions. So I did that, and I realized they became performances of the pieces. So they became a fresh way of entering them, because I didn't, wasn't sure where they began or ended either. And uh, I love it. I, did, I spent about three months doing that. And so I'll read. I'll, the other thing that happens with the shape writing is if you ever see someone reading, my friend Stephen Vincent was reading in a bar in San Francisco, people worry about you when you're, looking, <laughs> when you're, when you're doing this with a book. But, so I'll cheat, so I'll read some from a transcription. I'll at least do one where I'm doing this. The empty form is really, oh, and again, Dogen quotations. You hit something really intriguing, it's Dogen. The empty form is really not. I suppose I'm writing and it is not the sun and not a sphere, neither. I first came upon the clearing while sitting and attending to my breath. Cogitate cog, said the old codger. I first came upon the clearing while sitting and attending to my breathing cog, said the old codger. It has nothing of the narrative about it, cogitate. Think it over. For example, how about the words I have attained the way simultaneously with sentient beings on the great Earth, cog, said the old codger, think it over, cogitate. Isn't this where you left off? So again, that's what the shape looks like. Let's see what else might be enjoyable here. Yeah. Oh, this one I'll just show to you. There's, again, so many possibilities. I, I take real pleasure in that particular shape. Again, I think what I should also point out about the shape writing, they're all, always done without drafts. So it's, it's a form of improvisation or calligraphy in that moment. to all our books with their meticulous notes and markings. We had assumed that someone would care. The words we've touched are no more immortal than we are. Will everything disappear just as nothing disappears? Your body is not you. Your life is transported, moving in time without stopping ever for a moment. The pure mind does not stay. It comes and goes in fragments. Even if there is truth, it does not stay within the boundary of yourself, what happens to all our books? So these have taken on a lot of different manifestations that I couldn't really foresee. Uh, this one, for example, this one can, is, can be done as a really nice blues song. It's also been done, I've also had it performed with um, a really large full choir, fairly simple one. But again, I'll if you look at it on the page, the way I'm reading it to you is not the way it appears either. So I'm just uh, seeing what occurs in this moment. A golden dog, a black dog, and one I can't describe. 
came by shortly after dawn, came by the house, a golden dog, a black dog, and one I can't describe, came by shortly after dawn, came by the house, curious, sniffed around a golden dog, a black dog, and one I can't describe, came by shortly after dawn, came by the house, curious, sniffed around, ran down the hillside, a golden dog, a black dog, and one I can't describe, sniffed around, ran down the hill, side, crossed the gravel road, and disappeared. There are also those who understand without teachers. <laughs> so take a look. There's enough copies, and, and uh, I'd be glad for you to take a look at the shape writing of that particular book. I want to finish also reading a, a, a good bit from most recent book pieces. Uh, I have the actual note, the notebook that it comes from with me. I'll have that up there if you'd like to take a look. It's a, it's a, a strange book. What I do is I, uh, I'm very fond. Well, let me start out by saying, um, you know, if someone says to you, oh, you, there's this friend I'd like you to meet. He or she is a poet. I know you'll really get along. <laughs> no, no, it's really, it's like a family gathering. Oh, there's a cousin I want you. No. It's just, it's not going to go well. And, but... <laughs> Because poet, we, we split off from one another for the smallest of differences that we feel very intensely about and that matter to us, which is okay. And, and I'm finding as I'm getting older, I feel less inclined in that way, that really I feel more joyous and accepting of the fact that in this particular world and circumstance now, it's, it's um, beautiful, transgressive, smart, wonderful that people are writing poetry at all and reading poetry, so I feel a little less inclined. But what I'm what I drawn to, which you can find and get a great discussion if you ask any poet, so what kind of notebook do you like to write in? Or what sort of pen do you use? Or, and that, that can generate a pretty interesting conversation. So I think of myself as a sort of dance partner with the notebooks that I pick up. So I was finishing one notebook and uh, looking around in my room and saying, gee, is there something else I can write in? Where is the fact it's this, and, and so, so this, I saw this, spot, this notebook, and I thought, well, that looks lovely. Maybe I'll write in that. Um, to my surprise, the first page was already written. And it was something that my uncle had written, somebody I was very close to. He passed away a number of years ago, went through awful dementia, uh, was a really brilliant neurosurgeon and biblical scholar, and, and taught me a lot about uh, a viable Jewish practice, which I had virtually given up on. And so the, his, his writing begins, and I basically take his writing and take off from that, and everything that's written after that are very short uh, little fragments. But his, his writing begins Shabbat, May 20th, 2000. Here's what I did to prepare for my first direct conversation with God. Purchase this diary notebook. Pick an afternoon time when house empty. Create my own formal opening statement. Skip a little. I set the blessing for and put on my toilet, put on my blue keppa, set the timer for 10 minutes, walked out on the sun deck, sat down comfortably, set and started the timer, and quietly but audibly talked to God. Time went very quickly. And by June 6th, he's saying at the end of it, I keep praising God audibly. I feel refreshed. And so I'll read you a few of the sections. All, everything I'm reading, just very tiny fragments separated by an asterisk. How did I get so lucky? And then there is the next moment. From 21 years ago, he gave me this gift of his most intimate words, a blessing and a conversation with God. I have some of her ashes sitting on the writing desk. Her younger brother and now her. Head, heart, hand. Indeed, what more might a page hold? Three brown dogs living in the procession of time, dancing with integrity and grace. I ask you, as I ask myself, simply to listen. So open to it, a piece of toast and some granola. All time, before and after what I see, what to make of any day. All I knew or know began with this, emptiness with its incessant movement, aggregated singularity, too few words better than too many, 
Take some portion of her ashes, make a circle around the cedar tree. Is this what being becomes? Once written, I am no longer here. Drive, he said to anyone who would listen. Shake it up, baby, twist and shout. Cloud cover, what words return? In this vein, he made up a ritual to communicate with God, wrote one page and left the rest of this notebook blank. Have a piece of toast with butter or with jam. It simply isn't the same sky from day to day. Light is time. I am up early and right until you awaken. Let this be a place for compassion. She lives in memory as do we all until there is no one left who remembers. Door ajar, a door ajar, before and after the word, the word made flesh, the word made fresh, plan it, plan it. Conjure man with his bag of herbs and roots, bottle tree, oh liberty, what would you be now? Sung if you sing it with care, caring, cares mount, complex of sorrows and pain, worst ever, she says at 19, when it comes again, as it will, she will be somewhat schooled in it. When I was somewhat young, maybe nine or ten, I beat the new mahogany wall paneling in my room with a belt buckle. Now at 71, I have no idea why. They said it was a temper tantrum. I age as do you. Who does not see the finish line, but what to do about it? I think I am awake. Tell me exactly who or what is saying my body, my mind. Oh, my morning light. It takes shape, though I don't know what it is until much later, if ever. It was nothing if not a book of wonder. That's not where this is going. Thinking takes up what thinking is. Banjo or soprano sax, a notebook, small or large. I read it to you then when it was red hot. She always wanted her soup piping hot. Momentarily, we were together across the distances. Always a little slippage. Leave traction to the tractors. For any good mathematician or metaphysician, there are always other factors. Each and every shall have a say. Thinking is the real dancing its way inward. Say what? I am here once, with you once, with you I am here. It happened this morning, tomorrow something else will happen. He was, as some are, a fine and cranky poet who lived far away, perhaps in Kyoto, and for a living he sold ice cream. There are many ways now to live in a cave and stare at a wall. No matter what he said about the disappearance of the ego and sacred Eastern texts, this young one's energy and judgments were out of control. I have more than enough teachers, and so do you, some living, some dead. He carried with him the sacred text from place to place, reading it aloud, seeing who might take it to heart. No one knows what happened to the missing page. His daughter was the one playing Beatles songs at the farmer's market. Stories expand and contract, just like breathing. Segment of the book. Transmission occurs when you sit. Transmission takes place when you sit. He walked out quietly onto the sun deck, gathered the silence about him before he began to speak. Who will know it 21 years from now? Who is entitled to such mysticism? Just as, there, just as there had been water on other planets thousands and thousands of years ago. He was tired of reading about it, tired of studying what they had experienced. And a dull person is good because he is dull. They say the mind making connections, and then it is sunrise. The sun is but a morning star. He saw it so, and then again, so did he. 
at first hand, which means that you can and must do it too. Second after second, we used to say the clock is ticking. Do you read me, Roger, over and out? He is waiting still on the sun deck, listening, waiting for an answer. Here we are waiting with him. Thank you. Yeah, and then I, I think I don't revise, but I think I, I revise a lot. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, so, so I, I write. I write really fast, and my notebook is always a, a computer. I never write by longhand because I can't read my writing. But yeah. Huh. Yes. Why the why the horror of quatrain? Why the what? Horror of Quatrain. Oh. Or the, or the shame. shame. Quatrain. <laughs> well, it makes me a horrible avant gardist. <laughs> it's a just horrible avant garde. It's, it's a very, it's like a, I don't know, bad experimentalism in, in a way. It just surprised me that the writing was, and I, I'm sort of, I'm being facetious to some degree because it was also pleasurable enough, but it, it involves learning to accept the way writing comes to one and, and to treat it more as a vow rather than something that is controlled by my intention. And so it, it's I didn't think that's what would be coming up as a mode of writing. And it, was a, it felt a little um, retro and contrary to the way I'd been writing for a good while. But so what? You know, I, just, I, I think that it would be, I mean, because those poems in those portraits were very emotional. Right. They're, they're containers for that in a way. I mean, they sort of allow them. Well, that seems to be, that's, that's been my experience with the different invented forms. I think of them as, as epistemological lenses, lenses that ask, what can I see through this, what, what will I see and not see through this form? And so, yeah, obviously, I mean, I wrote hundreds of the, so obviously something was going on that was suitable for that. I didn't know it when I started it, and it really just kind of felt funny, sort of a throwback. And the writing I'm reading is really, in some ways, closer to writing I was doing 30 or 40 years ago than writing 10 years ago. But that's, I accept that and learn and learn from it and know that I'm more of a sort of a medium or location for what's going on, not dictating to the page what's gonna happen. So I'm, I'm, it's a little bit of facetiousness, I'm saying, uh, uh, but I was a little embarrassed. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. Anyone else? Yes, John. I have a question for you, Charles. How, how did you know how to translate those ink blots? I, did, I, I didn't. Wasn't that obvious? Um, you know, I, I think I'm familiar with and comfortable with the work of other people who have taken shapes and, and other forms and just improvised what they might sound like. And, and I certainly made those with some kind of sense that I was going to need to do that. But I, 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 those that I made this morning, I was with a group of poets at Sabino Canyon. And after I did that, some people read what they did. And I, I said, I'm not going to read this because I know I have to read this tonight. And it's like, I don't want to practice. I don't want to decide in advance what they're supposed to be. So if you hear me some other time if I ever read them again. They might not be like that at all. Yes. Do you think poems are your series, whatever? Um, where's it going to go? How do you, how are you going to carry that forward in other work? I mean, because once you make all those playful sounds and, you know, the child rock things that you're doing, how about doing, how, how can you chance form that in other way. I mean, once you do one thing, how can it uniquely, you know, another form be, how, how is it going to continue? Well, well the, the, the book is finished. I, I, I haven't sent it out 
for publication yet, but I know a couple of people that are sort of interested that know about parts of it. So in that sense, I'm not going to continue it further. In, in another way, you know, I haven't been f physically making books for like 40 years, and that is a part of what I do and who I am. And I think pat particularly during this COVID period, I was thrown into what I know, you know, sitting and being and myself, and, and it just seemed to be a natural means of expression, and those poems came actually kind of fast, and, um, and, and I'm very happy with them, but whether I'll do something like them again, I don't know. Um, but whether I'll do something in some way connected to my, some of my life's practices, which that includes, probably so. What kind of uh, the practice of someone who, who, you know, both studied and practiced setting type and making handmade paper and mixing colors of ink on a marble slab. And, you know, I don't only like what books turn out to be. I love the process of making them, uh, that kind of making them. You know, I, I also make or design books that I send out to somebody to print from a computer and that's fine too i'm very happy with that but but the other is is where i stood while writing this work thank you okay one more question and then we're going to do something else here if there is one more question What's next for all of you? <laughs> Tomorrow, let's do the next thing. Tomorrow is the next no, thing? Let's do the next thing. Oh, yeah, okay. Well, the next thing is the next thing we're going to do right here. <laughs> I don't know. I think maybe I'll wake up in the morning and do a, a field recording. Uh, uh, Hank, let's see what comes in. Okay, I think we're done. Okay. Okay. Uh, yeah.